Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm the film attorney and my client has a case. Late one night, it'll make you love late one night. You want to be the whole one, you? Late one night, he begins his quest late one night. Taco, bitch. In 2010, Lionsgate Films released a movie called Kick-Ass, about a kid who becomes a superhero and sucks at it. It's a very funny and original premise, right? Wrong. However, maybe not so original. It had been done before in the grim 1990 low-budget film Robot Ninja. To give a brief synopsis of the plot, a comic book artist assumes the identity of his superhero creation and attempts to fight crime. Emphasis on the word attempt. Shithead! And even though filmmaker J.R. Buckwalter couldn't afford lights for this film, somehow he managed to get Linnea Quigley and Burt Ward. How, I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah. And let's talk about the tagline of the film. The ultimate superhero of the future has arrived. How about no? No, 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 no. Well, the thing about Robot Ninja, its greatest strength is that it does a lot of things you don't expect. Like, for one, it's dressed up like a superhero movie, right? But it's actually, rather than following that formula of a guy, you know, becomes a superhero because somebody killed his family or he got bit by a spider or whatnot. He does follow that, he does do that, but unlike those other movies where you get this big bad guy super villain with crazy superpowers and you know he rescues some pretty girl and all that nonsense, this plays out more like a Tales from the Crypt episode where a guy tries to become a superhero and it doesn't work out. I think that's because this movie's actually a horror film that plays on the superhero delusion. Which, so does Kick-Ass, don't get me wrong. However, the difference is, Kick-Ass does turn around and reinforce the superhero delusion with an even more over-the-top, ridiculous, impossible character like Hit-Girl. Robot Ninja is also the first film to address vigilante involvement as more of a hazard than a help. The way so many films do now... Our very strength invites challenge. Challenge incites conflict. And conflict... breeds catastrophe. None of his interventions make a difference in regards to saving lives. These people were dead with or without him. The most he can accomplish is what a real person could if they attempted to do this. Kill one or two and then get the crap beaten out of you. See, Leonard doesn't become a superhero. He becomes a serial killer. And really, the only difference in the two is the choice of victim. Hey, Slice Cream Man. I got a new flavor for you. Buckshot and brains. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're pretty. Do you want to go on a date? Guys like the Punisher are what we wish mass murderers did when they flipped out, but instead they just shoot up churches and movie theaters. See, Leonard's quest has nothing to do with justice. He's angry about a, the TV show based on his comic book getting shoemockered by the studio. So when he meets the Dirty Sanchez gang, he's able to rationalize his subconscious desires to kill the TV executives he feels are ruining his life by substituting them with these vicious gang members. All of which fit into a category of serial killer victims known as the less dead. People society won't miss or notice are gone. Anyway, let's take a look at the brief crime that inspires our... our hero. Um. 
What the hell was that? Well, that was a crime. I mean, kudos to the filmmakers for making the main baddie a woman. A woman named Sanchez. Okay, this gal here is the best part of this movie. Although, I can't figure out why she's the alpha dog in this street gang, unless they just grew up together and the pecking order hasn't changed since they were in kindergarten. They're going to end up like your friend. Not tonight, Ninja Man. It's our turn to slice and dice tonight. Kill that fucker! But aside from that, Sanchez actually deserves some credit as one of the greatest supervillains of all time. In the long legacy of supervillains who have faced down a superhero, Sanchez actually beat her. And not in some silly metaphorical sense like how the Joker technically beat Batman in the Dark Knight. No, she beat him, beat him. Really beat him. Like a bratty child in a piggly wiggly. He didn't stand a chance. She annihilated him. The only reason she doesn't make it through the film is because a cop shoots her in the back. Illegally, by the way. You would think that this being a big city, our hero would have some problems tracking down the marauding Miss Sanchez. I mean, it's like he doesn't have a mobile crime lab or anything like that. But apparently, Miss Sanchez is responsible for 90% of the crimes being committed in her zip code. So it's relatively easy for the robot ninja to find them. You know, I never really got the impression that this was a big city. It seems like a small town on the outskirts of a big city, maybe, but... Then again, I can't see the rest of the town, so I have no idea. Robot Ninja suffers most from its lighting issues, which occasionally makes for an interesting shot, but ultimately it, it leaves the action hard to see. But aside from that, Robot Ninja's pretty ahead of its time. It was just very under its budget. I'm the film attorney, and for now, the defense rests.